Check it out guys, we've got the Horizon Hobby E-Flight 90mm Viper, but with a twist. For a first in channel history, I've actually decided to take the plunge against my better judgment and run an eight cell setup, running two SMC 3600 packs in, pair, or in series, connected to a FMS 1500 KV motor system. We have a GPS in it too, we're gonna do speed testing, we'll have the on-screen display running and all that fun stuff so you guys can see how it's running. Uh, this thing, I've already flown it off camera, I did some landings with it, I've always been vehemently opposed to ADES because I always felt that it was going to fly poorly compared to the six cell variant because these things tend, generally tend to be, you know, designed for six cells and the weight associated with it. But because these SMC packs are so lightweight, what we end up getting is the ability to run a heavier motor with lightweight packs in the front that kind of flies very similar to the original setup and it has way more kick way more kick it's unbelievably good and it lands just as good as it did too so we're gonna go ahead and cut right to that and then we'll get it going all right so we do have the eight cell system in here the 1500 kv fms motor this thing's heavy but the jet actually doesn't weigh much more than it did on the six cell setup it's actually flying like it's on a heavy six cell pack like a 6200 in terms of weight let's go ahead and get her lined up for takeoff one thing I'm gonna say right now, I'm sorry about the audio That's quality. Amazing. I totally forgot to bring my GoPro memory card, so we're not gonna sync up the audio. I'll just stand next to the camera. Here we go. That's three point two five. Windmilled and I didn't correct for it in time. This thing flies way better on a on an eight cell setup. Look at that power. Did you catch that? Mm-hmm. It doesn't Oh my God! Doesn't doesn't uh, beg for it at all. No, it's I mean just... the six cell was pretty powerful, but like this is just an entirely different league. Because let's do some aerobatic routines on this uh, lighter weight 3600 pack, like some knife edge down the runway, y'all. Let's do it. All right, get her down. Man, that thing's got some speed. What was the top speed? 91 minute, 95.1 miles per hour. I'm not even trying to get top speed on this thing. That was in a knife edge. <laughs> yeah, which there is probably a little bit more drag because I'm using the rudder in that one. Um, actually, not even probably. There is more drag from the rudder being kicked out. Let's go ahead and put her into some tumbles. God, this thing is so good on eight cells. I don't think I think that's the limit of what I'll go to because I can't imagine twelve cells being much better than this. Here we go, three, two, one. One of these days, I'm going to rip the wings off this jet, and it's going to look awesome when it does. You know what we can do though, since we still have we still have our high alpha mix. I think we can get a high alpha pass in this thing. I know we shot it earlier, but let's see, let's see what it does. Go up nice and high, and we'll see if we can get her lower. Dude, there is no want for power. I screwed that up. I was using the wrong uh, rudder direction. Let's try that again. There is no want for power. It comes out of that high alpha pass instantly, even if it was botched. Alpha, okay. volts. There we go. It's a little harder to get it over here, lower where I want it to be. It's not as lightweight, right? <laughs> Good God. So I definitely had to sacrifice some of my high alpha performance, but you know what? It's not like this jet was ever made to do it anyway. We're gonna go vertical, three, two, one. 28.72 volts. Good gosh. How much power do we have? 30.44 volts. All right, we're not gonna be able to fly this very long on a 3600 pack setup. So we need to go ahead and get it down here momentarily. Do one or two touch and goes. This thing is super cool now. I never realized how awesome eight cells could be. I've always just kind of been against it because it's it's not cheap, right? The motor itself is like 120 bucks. The ESC is like another 80 bucks or whatever. And then you got to get the, you know, the twice the batteries to fly the same amount of time. But the power upgrade is worth it. Look at the way it comes in though. I could have used reverse thrust, but I would have had to give up a channel for my elevators or something. And they both have to be on separate channels because they are running on a, uh, they, they, uh, I have to reverse one of them in order to get it to run on the same channel. So we've got these 4,400 SMC packs that we're tossing in. This is a little bit more challenging because it's not a battery compartment 
that I've specced to fit these correctly because I got other stuff in here that was easier when I was just using one six cell pack. So what I'll do is move this out of the way, put one battery in at a time, and do this a little bit more intelligently. And since this is heavier, it can be a little further back. There we go. Now it's lined up correctly. Now it's sitting where it's supposed to be. Now we can go ahead and strap it in. Normally I would uh, caution against letting the strap buckle be on top of it. It should normally be on the side, but there's three of these holding it in, so it doesn't matter. Uh, normally the reason why I say that is because if it's on the side or on top of it like that, it doesn't have as much grip force and it can slide around potentially. Something to be aware of. We're gonna do a short field stall takeoff this time around. We're gonna go as fast as we can off the ground. Three, two, one. Got up in like one and a half seconds. Now we're gonna do some speed testing. 30.67 volts. 31.46 volts. One oh three. But that wasn't the top speed. What was the top speed? Nice. Let's go with the wind. That'll help because we're trying to fight the wind right now. So it's coming from in front of us actually. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to finagle this a little bit. Here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> I'm sure we could go even faster. Yeah. Let's go. Vertical, we're get just gonna it, dive. Get it, get it dived in. Yeah. We're gonna dive this thing. I don't care if it's accurate or not. Miles Still 121. <laughs> Again, I don't care too much about top speed, but sometimes testing this stuff's kind of fun. Get it in a tall dive and run it down straight longer. Well, the problem is the wind is coming from the other direction, so we actually have to... We're not trying to get the plane to fly into the wind, so we're gonna go from over here. All right, go up. There we go. Flip over. Come on, baby, get out of it. Five minutes. Still 121. Yeah, we got that wind. Eh, it's probably not the wind. It could just be the trim, too. I have trim in here that's probably interfering with its ability to fly as clean as it could. This thing does not lack for power. Watch this tumble we're going to do. It is so good. Such a good jet. I'm so happy that Horizon was able to get this thing out of the market. I know it's a little bit of older of a jet. It's a 2021 model. It's not the new hotness anymore, but it's still super cool to me. I don't know what that sound is. Don't worry about it. Coming in real hot. There we go. Do a little bit of uh, touching and going. Show you guys that, you know, there are issues with eight cells, right? The heavier the setup on the wings, the more likely the plane is to stall because you're reducing the angle at which it is going to stall, the critical angle of attack. The more weight it has to carry, the faster it's going to stall under any given airspeed when you start banking. But look at the way it's coming in right now. You probably wouldn't even think that it had eight cells in it. It flies like a feather. It's actually almost better on this weight. I can't imagine going 12 cells. I've seen some guys do that. Um, that just seems kind of excessive to me because uh, it seems kind of hard to, like the, the amount of weight you're gonna have to put into that motor is gonna make it super tough to get it to balance right. It might be better, it might be faster, I'd have to test it. Uh, but I don't see myself doing it in this jet. I think eight's about where I want to be. Let's see if we can get a nice wheelie landing. Let's leave the wheels out. This thing is so cool though. I love this this amount of power we have. Never had it before on the 6L. It wasn't like it was lacking terribly for power. It was just, uh, I don't know, getting out of some maneuvers like the high alpha pass was difficult. And you had to time it just right. Trying to drop a wing on me there. Look at how agile it is, how much power. All right, we, we do actually have to go swap the packs out again. That nose gear door got caught on the wind, that's okay. Let's try dropping it in with Crow this time. That's something I haven't done on this new setup. There we go. So with Crow, you actually have to maintain throttle to bring it in. There we 
There we go. And the Crow should actually slow it down too and work as manual air brakes when we don't actually have reverse thrust anymore. I don't have enough channels for that. I'd have to use a 10 channel setup for that. Again, sorry about all the audio quality. I'm, I'm sure it's not horrible, but like I prefer my voice to be a little bit more booming and present when I'm talking. And it's not easy to do that when I have the uh, camera not exactly next to my mouth. Uh, but you know, you gotta have, you gotta remember to bring stuff in this hobby and running a YouTube channel. There's a bunch of stuff you have to remember to make it look decent. And a lot of editing work you guys don't get to see. And one of the things is, timing up everything so that it syncs up and sounds correct. And one of the things we did here too was, you know, getting the GPS overlay on. I don't think any other channels do that with a GPS overlay. So I think we're one of the only ones doing that. If other channels want to do that, that's cool too. More of the merrier, I say. All right, there we go. I'm betting right now that taxi or that uh, runway light right there, if you point over at it, I'm betting if I put the jet right over here, we'll get up before that runway light. Full flaps. Here we go. Three, two, one. Got up before. We it. did. We did. All right, let's do an aero routine or an acro routine, whatever you want to call it. Nose gear door got stuck. This thing is so cool. I'm going to be hard to keep up with, man, so do your best. Yeah, I'm working with it. The right rudder to keep her into the wind here. There we go. Tracking her around. Let's do a low high speed pass. This thing is so freaking cool, man. It's like a, I got a new love for my, one of my favorite jets. Keep it up, man. I got you. You got me? Yeah, keep it up. I'll keep it up. Don't like when she gets over my head like that, though. There we go. Let's do an inverted pass with the wind. A little touchy feeling. You can see getting blown away by the wind, isn't that cool? That's who. <laughs> no, we haven't tried yet is a snap roll. So let's go ahead and put it up into that. Three, two, one, snap roll. Not much of a, it's not really that impressive. Yeah, but, it, it tumbles better than it snaps. God, it's, it stalls and it spins really nicely. If you use the stall to your advantage, you can get it to spin three times faster than it normally does. Using a stall to your advantage, that's not something I hear most people say. <laughs> well, when the when one of the wings starts to stall, it's going to drop. So if you know that when that's going to happen and you have a, an idea of when it's going to do it, you can use that to, see right there, how I got mm -hmm. to spin three times faster than it normally would? Yeah. You can use that to your advantage. Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> Holy, I'm having so much fun with this thing, man. All right, I think we're pushing the limits here. So let's put her into a break. Three, two, one. How much power do we have left? 30.184. Yeah, we are at the limit here. So as to avoid pancaking our beautiful Viper that has been through hell and back. This is the same Viper I did the high alpha pass and skidded on that taxiway with. Um, let's go ahead and just bring her on in. No crow this time. I want a graceful landing into the wind. A little bit of throttle. Grease her in as best we can. Three minutes. Come on, baby. There we go. Yes, <laughs> you just wanted to ride the rear, huh? I was trying to make it do that. That was me holding the stick back uh -huh. the way. I wanted it to do that. Nice. All right. So while we taxi the jet over, let me just say eight cells, is it worth it? Yeah, it is worth it. It's freaking awesome is what it is. Is an eight cell system worth it? Yeah, man, it totally is. Um, but you got to spec it right. You can't just go throw in any, any normal battery in there. These SMC 4400s and 3600s are super lightweight. So these things are going to be great for an eight cell setup. The motor is already shifting a ton of the weight to the back. If you want to see the CG we were using, let's go ahead and hold the plane upside down. 
I can guarantee you off the top of my head, it's probably balancing right over the top of the wheels, which it actually is, which is why it was so easy to wheelie the jet when it balances right here over the top of the wheel well. So again, is eight cell worth it? Yeah, man, it's so, it's so much fun. It's so easy to fly. It's a little bit more susceptible to stalling, but that's just kind of the nature of the game with aerodynamics. The more weight you add to a wing, you reduce its critical angle of attack, meaning the angle at which it stalls into the air, uh, incoming wind. So, you know, when, when maybe I would stall here before, now I'm kind of like right here. It's minimal, but it's still noticeable to me. But I can use it to make it do stall spins and all sorts of other cool stuff. So there's all sorts of different neat things you can do with these things. And I can't wait to take this up again. I'm kind of getting addicted to eight cells. I don't think every jet needs it, but this one definitely could use the power output. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you again next time. Following up from the text corrections on my critical angle of attack error, this jet isn't too noticeably different with the additional weight of the 8-cell power system. The general idea behind what I said was correct though, it is easier to stall a heavier aircraft. The additional wing loading does not improve stall characteristics, it actually makes them worse. On days like this, with a lot of wind though, it aids with turbulence penetration and it makes the model less susceptible to wind shear but not by any huge amount. It's really not even that noticeable. Where it is most visible is when the jet enters high alpha. It requires more throttle to stay up than it did on a six cell setup. Consequently, it's also much easier to exit the maneuver. It performs better overall whether landing or taking off, but it will more aggressively bite you if you bank it too hard and pull the elevator when the airspeed is too low. Do you need an 8 cell system? Not really. This jet flies great on 6 cells. The stock power system provides gobs of power. It's just not as immediate as the power that you can get from the 8 cell system. Do we recommend it? Well, if you're chasing low end power, absolutely. But if you want top speed, you may find that it's faster on the 6 cell setup. There's trade-offs to everything. 8 cells is a fun way to fly and we'll probably experiment with it in more jets, but We'll never take an 8 cell setup that compromises aerobatic performance. That being said, let's see you guys next time with a new upload.